In this instruction video, we will discuss causal relationships. Many of you might intuitively recognize causal relationships in daily life. For example, that the number of hours you studied for the last course was a cause of the grade you got on the exam. Despite this familiarity with causal relationships, philosophers have been arguing for centuries about the precise definition of cause and effect. It was John Locke who stated that that which produces any simple or complex idea we denote by the general name cause, and that which is produced effect. So, a cause is what makes any other thing begin to be, and an effect is something that had its beginning from some other thing. The 19th century philosopher John Stuart Mill formalized three essential ingredients of a causal relationship. A causal relationship exists if the cause precedes the effect, the cause is related to the effect. This means that cause and effect go together or co-vary. When the cause is present, we should see the effect. And if the cause is not present, the effect should be absent. And Alternative explanations can be ruled out. Let's illustrate these criteria with an example. Suppose we hypothesize that loneliness causes depression. We give some lonely depressed people a cat to take care of. Now these people are no longer lonely. So we have two groups. People without a cat, the lonely people, and people with a cat, who aren't lonely. If the hypothesis is correct, we would expect the people that take care of a cat to have a lower depression. Let's go back to the criteria. Loneliness needs to happen before the effect, a decrease in depression. We are able to show this because we control the presence of the cause, loneliness. Second, the cause and effect should be related. Suppose we found an effect of loneliness on depression. So less loneliness goes together with lower depression. Then we have showed that if the cause is absent, the effect does not occur. Now, this is all relatively easy. But the difficulty lies in the last criterion, ruling out alternative explanations, so other possible causes of the effect. We can look for alternative explanations in our example. Maybe. The increased physical activity to take care of a cat actually caused lower depression, instead of the decrease in loneliness. Alternative explanations form threats to the internal validity of a study. An important role of methodology is developing and using research designs that minimize these threats. There is one other point we can make about causality. Causation requires correlation. A cause and effect should be related, they should correlate. But correlation does not imply causation. If we consistently observe aggressive behavior after some children played a violent video game, it doesn't mean the game caused the aggressive behavior. It could be that aggressive children tend to seek out more aggressive stimuli, reversing the causal direction. So always remember, correlation does not imply causation.